welcome to Rockland Sound. Um, this is where we usually say where rock beats Rockland, and I'm in Austin, Texas. Um, we're created by uh, two bandmates, um, that ex-bandmates. I'm originally from New Jersey, and uh, my normal co-host, who runs a web design company, um, gets a little bogged down and uh, sometimes can join us and sometimes can't. Um, his name is Tom Osa. He welcomes you here as well. Um, so basically what we do is we want to get a little bit of know about you. So you introduce yourself. Uh, we have a member of Velvet Chains here today. Hey, bud. Thanks for having me. I'm super happy to be here today. And thanks for the intro. I'm Niels. I'm the bass player and I'm the person who formed Velvet Chains. All right. And uh, yeah, here we're here in Las Vegas and, and, and we just released our first record a few weeks ago. So yeah. All right. Now give the name out of the record for us. It's Icarus, Icarus, like the flight of Icarus. That's right. Okay, I've listened to some of the tracks. I am impressed. Um, Thank you. I, uh, I also noticed that you have a member of Guns N' Roses joining you on one of your singles. Yeah, we had a couple collabs in there. We also had uh, two members of Duff McKagan's Loaded in there too, so we're super proud of that. All right, so I think everybody's got a lot to dig into. And um, I listen to you, and even in a couple of the interview pieces I've read and stuff, people kind of seem to want to lump you in, a, like sounding like a grunge band um, uh, in a couple of the descriptions. And I do not hear that and for my perky ears. I hear um, a you know, punchy hard rock band with a lot of catch and melody, and uh, definitely got some uh, ripping guitars in the bottom, you know, rhythm section that uh, is definitely thundering. So. Um, either way, it's music, so it doesn't know these need all the labels. And um, I think you're off to a good start there. So welcome again to the show. Um, now, we'd like to get into a name. You have four members, um, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and anything you want to say about your 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 members, uh, your, your bandmates? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so we're all uh, four very different people. And we all uh, met here on Craigslist about three and a half years ago. And I put that ad up. And um, our guitar player, Mohan, he's from Brazil originally. Wow. And uh, I'm from uh, South America. I'm from Chile originally. And uh, our singer is from the East Coast, from Delaware. And our drummer is also from the East Coast, from Pennsylvania. So we're quite the diverse uh, crowd. And uh, those rehearsal sessions can be quite fun trying to understand each other and each other's <laughs> cultures. So, yeah, great people. Great people. Yeah, years, years ago, I used to... Um have a band called Scarshine, which is uh, what uh, Tom and uh, Tom is a drummer, and I'm a vocalist, guitar player, songwriter. And um, a guy came in, I was just interviewing people in my apartment on the couch, bringing an amp in or whatever, I was trying to you know get guitar players. And a guy walked in and he was from Brazil. And he said, um, well, here's the band I was in in Brazil. And he opens up YouTube and he's playing for like 100,000 people at some festival. And he's shown me, I forget the name of the band, but he, I was like, and you want to hang here right now with the club guy? But uh, he was he was like, I just want to play good music. And I, I, it didn't fit because we were playing different types of tunes, types of uh, styles sure. of music, but uh, I ended up staying friends with him for a while. Um, now, as far as influences go, I can see your shirt there. So we got some Iggy in the Stooges. Um, what, uh, <laughs> yeah. what are the, everybody has music around them. OK, I have a specific question I ask to every artist. They seem to like it. Um, it's kind of unique to us, though. I'm sure somebody's asked it before on other, you know, another show. Um, but it, it does get a, a good reaction. So give us some of your basic influences growing up, um, obviously from another country, different types of music, I'm sure, around you. Yeah, yeah no, good question. Um, the first notion I have of any band existing when I was a, probably a toddler or, or a kid was Guns N' Roses. So for me, that name stuck in my head permanently. And that's the first band I have a notion of. And that's my biggest influence at the same time. Uh, on top of that, um, a lot of people say that Velvet Chains sounds a lot like Velvet Revolver and Stone mm -hmm. Temple Pilots. And, you know, I tend to agree with that. So we can throw those two in the bag, too, as uh, influences for me. Then uh, we can add the 90s era, throw in some Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. And uh, I kind of parked myself on the Green Days and the Lincoln Parks of the world in the early 2000s. So those are my, my influences. Everything from the late, very late 80s, very pretty much 89 and going forward, um, if not 88 or whatever, Appetite came out. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, all the way to like the early 2000s. But those are my influences. Iggy, I love Iggy. I, I love I love everything he does. I wouldn't call him a big influence on me. I like the t-shirt though, and I love Iggy Pop. So <laughs> yeah, he, he's still going. So you can't say nothing about that. Oh, yeah, he's running man. around. Uh, I was watching oh, yeah. uh, to change the subject real quick, but uh, same kind of vibe was I was watching a clip of Mick Jagger um, warming up in re like uh, before they go out, out went out on this new tour. And he goes into a, like a dance studio and he puts on basically the live tracks of their, like maybe puts the, puts the concert on like a sound system. And he yeah. just literally runs around for like two hours and he's 78 years old. And I couldn't keep up for 15 minutes of that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to make the longevity thing, man. I hope to be doing the same thing one day when I'm 78, man. I try I, I try to work out a lot. I try to eat healthy and all that. Otherwise, I'm not going to make it past 60. So, yeah, man. Well, trying, trying hard. You definitely got yeah. the personality and the tune so far are rocking. And, <laughs> um, you know, having been influenced by Guns N' Roses, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and you already got it, you know, you're already uh, jamming with some of the guys in, uh, in, the, in, in that circle. I think you're, uh, you're doing well. Now, here's right. the question I like to ask, okay? So basically, you know, you, you gave some of the influences, but what is that album, that first album that you had to have and you didn't matter whether you saved up your lunch money that you bought with your own money, but you had to have it and you, you went in it, you went and got it on your own. Dude, I love the question. It's probably used to your illusion one and two. That's again, one of my first notions of actually going in there and saying, I need to get that album is that one. And mm -hmm. yeah. That was definitely, you can see the GNR influence on me, but it's heavy. Use it. Yeah. Use your illusion for sure. Yeah. Right. Good question. I like that. I've never right. been asked that before. So when, when did the, um, the band actually form where you're in the, you're in the, the vibe of these, these four people and, uh, know, know it's working and you're going to move forward. Yeah, man. It's an interesting story. Uh, we, I put this ad on Craigslist in 2018 and uh, I had multiple people reach out and send uh, send messages. Now, the whole thing about Velvet Chains is a little bit like the Dead Daisies. Are you familiar with the Dead Daisies at all? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Dead Daisies is kind of led by uh, the rhythm guitar player, David Lowy. And he has band members that he signs up and then they'll go. They're all, you know, very famous people, I think. Or Glenn Hughes is on there. And there's, uh, yeah, there's Doug Aldrich. And yeah, it's a bunch. And then, you know, they'll do their thing for a couple of years, three years, and then he'll uh, switch them up and move on. And, and even Richard Ford is who collabed with us. He was part of uh, uh, the Dead Daisies there for a minute, a while ago. So I put this ad saying, hey, let's form a band, kind of with that idea in mind also. Let's form it and let's see where it goes. And, and, and you know, maybe we'll, we'll make some changes down the road and so on, but let's, let's get going. And uh, the whole point was to start kind of like what they did as a, a little bit of a cover band. So we started playing covers, playing gigs around town, clubs, bars, out of blast, casinos, and so on. And at some point, the pandemic hit, and we found ourselves that we were just sitting at home on the couch with a bottle of whiskey. You know, everybody in their own house. I drink whiskey. The other three do whatever they do. I'm not going to publicize anything here, but um, so we just we're like, guys. I kind of sent them a message saying, we can't meet, we can't rehearse, we can't hang out, we can't play. Do we just? waste our time getting drunk or do we get drunk and start writing songs right because the uh, bottle was not leaving the equation at any point and uh they kind of agreed like you know what let's try to write some songs so um, that's sorry that's really when we made the the switch over to becoming an original band it was kind of due to covid now we had discussed it previously and we were starting to throw ideas around but uh, COVID really forced us to, to get down and, and get to writing. And during that process, we, every, I, I wrote, I think, five of the songs. Um, Noel may have written two or three, uh, Jerry and Lohan one each or, or a couple. And I went to, to, to LA and I reached out to Drew Lawrence, who Drew is a multi-platinum uh, songwriter. He's worked with a bunch of, of, of names in the industry, very successful. And uh, we met with him and I had been um, writing a little bit of stuff with him too prior. And we met up and we said, uh, Drew, uh, let's give these songs, these ideas, some shape. And he helped us put some demos together using, you know, key, a MIDI keyboard and uh, Logic or whatever. And uh, he'd sing or Jerry would sing and so on. And we had some super, super rough basic demos. 
from which we started building upon changing stuff around and new baseline, new guitar rips, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, that's how we started giving shape to these songs. And we went to a recording studio and then did the demos properly with us playing our instruments and Jerry singing. And once we had all that stuff done is when we started reaching out to, to people for potential collabs. And honestly, we only reached out to three people and the three of them said, yeah. So we were very, very lucky. It's not like we had to go down a list or anything, but that's a little bit of the, of the story of the band and our, our, our change from being a cover band to an original band. And, you know, we've been playing ever since we played last weekend, we played two gigs on Saturday. We've been playing every weekend. It's been nonstop and we we're, we're loving it. Yeah. You know, what's amazing is that um, same way this podcast started, um, my my buddy Tom there that, that uh, like I said, that we're, does the podcast with me, uh, me and him uh, stay in touch, usually talk over the phone here and there. And we started to talk on Zoom, just kind of look at each other during the pandemic, you know, kind of maybe yeah. you, know, you want to connect with somebody because, you know, you're not around people as much. And one of us dropped it out, want to do a podcast. And I happen to be a lot deeper in the music um, as far as knowing facts and and i'm older than him a little bit so um i had a, i was following a whole bunch of, of the these great artists uh, on facebook and a few of them i just messaged them and they were like yeah i'll come on and that's how we started rolling now i'm in the now we're into the publicists and, and getting all that going yeah. so now it's starting to become something real and growing and big so you know it is nice though to have somebody give you a shot and, uh, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons why I, I was happy to interview you guys, because if we could do anything to help you, um, you know, I feel like we're doing our part. So, um, yeah, man. you know, Thank you. Uh, the story so far is great. Like I said, I'll reiterate for everybody out there. Um, I YouTube and Spotify you and, uh, you know, we'll put some songs in the playlist of mine and uh, keep keep following you. Now, um, where are you as far as the 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 album now um now when is it officially when did it officially come out or is it coming out like right around this wheelhouse area no it came out two weeks ago so we did an album release party and it came out on uh, friday uh 24th of september if okay. i'm not mistaken so a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and uh and yeah it's out there man and we've been releasing a couple of singles prior so end of july we did tattooed the one featuring richard fortis and then in uh, uh, August, we did Strange Love, which was our second release. And then now with the album, the leading single was Past the Disease. And that's the one that has the collab from uh, Jeff Rouse and uh, Mike Squires on there. So no, we've been releasing music now for, for three or four months. And it's been fun, man. And also we released that, that music video at the same time we did uh, the tattooed release. And that's, uh, if you had a chance to look at it, that music video was also quite fun to do and it's quite intense and it's, it's yeah, quite, uh, quite interesting to watch. <laughs> I'll give you a little uh, uh, idea of what we do is that as we're talking, like when you say the use your illusion was the album that you, you know, that you, you got with your own money, you're going to see the, the covers of them. So you'll see the cover of your album up here and your website and, and all those things. Um, once we edit it and everything now any shows that you have I know you said you're playing every weekend even doing the double shows anything that um you have that uh is coming up that you want to get out there and promote yeah we got what, what do we got we're playing on Monday the 18th over at the Cosmopolitan Hotel over here at the barber shop that's a pretty cool spot we're playing uh, August, October 29th. We're doing actually a tribute thing for uh, Alice in Chains and Stone Temple Pilots. It's one of those AI, Alice in Chains, Grunge Nights, blah, blah, blah. So we're doing that. We're going to play a bunch of tunes from them, uh, maybe throw in a couple of originals in there. And then we have something scheduled for uh, December here at the Tuscany Hotel. But yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've been at it so hard and working so hard that we're trying to start spacing out the gigs a little bit because we've been playing pretty much every weekend for the past three or four months. So that's all we have booked for now, but we're planning on festivals for 2022 around the US, perhaps a tour in the US. And then once COVID clears up, we definitely want to go hit Latin America and Europe. So definitely next year, once there's more clarity on what's going on, but uh, it seems like everybody keeps inviting them. So any idea, excuse me for inter interrupting, any idea that you might jump onto another, uh, like a bigger band's uh, like package or something or any word? Yeah. That was uh, that was discussed with uh, our booking agent uh, a few months ago. They, they they reached out and said, "Hey, would you guys want to jump on uh, a tour with uh, like most likely the Daisies, but the big act would be Queensrÿche." 
And Nothing. you guys and the Daisies will be the supporting act. And, you know, we went back and forth and we thought about it. We thought about it. And we said, you know what? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I love Queensryche, man. Love them. Great freaking band, man. They're, they're you know, we they're everything we aspire to be, right? But I don't think it's the right audience for us. You know, we want to, we're going to do a tour. We want to make sure that we, we, we hit the right crowd. So that's why we passed on it. But, man, it was I'm so thankful and appreciative that they even ran that through us. That was already mind-blowing on its own. <laughs> So yeah, we're definitely looking at those, man. Look at it this way, you know. I mean, I'm I just hit fifty in June, and you know, back in the day, you know, Kiss was taking out people like Tom Petty, yeah, uh, and right. Bob Seger band. So right, you know, right, yeah, you're in right. Front of a you're big right. Crowd, it's a big crowd. You got to do yeah. your job. <laughs> you're right. No, you're right. And there's an argument to do that, and it was kind of a split decision on the band. Uh, at the end of the day, I kind of said, okay, I want to, you know, make the decision, but yeah, I'm just waiting to see what's coming next. And you know what, maybe we'll talk a year from now. I'll be like, man, that was the worst thing we ever did. Not take that one, but or maybe no, we'll be not, like, Hey, you know what? We got this other one instead. So we'll find out. Man. No, I'm not putting <laughs> any bad vibes on you. All good vibes. You know, I don't yeah, tell you yeah. that about Queensryche. Uh, I saw them uh, on the injustice for all tour open for Metallica uh -huh. and they played everything heavy, obviously to keep, keep up with Metallica. And yeah, uh, amazing. Yeah. And then like a year or two later, I saw him open up for Def Leppard on the Hysteria completely, tour. Yeah, completely different. Yeah, right. They still had enough catchy stuff, you know, to, to play, you know, to play and fit into that crowd and, and, and dig them. And then I saw Europe open up for, for uh, Def Leppard after that. And they were completely even, you know, poppier than Def yeah. Leppard. And it so didn't yeah. matter who it was. It was a great show because they were all bringing it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Like I said, they, there's there's an argument. But th these bands have a lot more repertoire, too. So we only have one record out. We own 10 right. songs. So we don't have much to pick and choose from when it comes down to, hey, let's use a different tune. That's more accurate for this crowd. But no, dude, you're right. I mean, there's there, there, there's no bad tours that you can do with the wrong band at the end of the day. It's just getting ourselves out there and getting exposure. So we'll see what comes along next. We'll probably take it. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, look. You have the options, and you're, you're seemingly doing it well, um, building those steps. And uh, I think that that's impressive in uh, meeting you. Um, you definitely have some focus there that uh, a lot of younger bands don't have. So I think that that's to your uh, advantage there. Um, I don't think you're wasting your opportunities. That's so you know, uh, I, I'm impressed by that. Um, yeah. Now, uh, maybe look. We'll go on a little bit more because I think we're covering pretty much a lot of the, the stuff and you're getting right to the, the meat and potatoes of everything. Um, as far as the going on into the next batch of tunes, are you trying to have another record out before you go and say play next year and have just have more, you know, more diversity in the in your repertoire? Yeah, that's a good question. If the stars would align and I had my 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 my, my pick of things. Mm -hmm. I'd say we'd have some songs ready that we'd probably play live next time we, we head out and that are on the new record that we haven't started. We, we started writing songs. We haven't uh, recorded anything yet. We have a few rough demos again and done with a MIDI keyboard and Logic. But my, my ideal scenario would be, you know, head out, promote our record, but throw in a couple of, uh, of, of newer things that people will be like, hey, what's that? And then we release those officially down the road. But I don't think we will be releasing a new record at least until end of 2022, maybe early 2023. So we still got yeah ways to go with this one. Yeah, no, I just meant looking ahead as far as you know. You're talking about you're, you're you know you're limited mainly to the one album, which everybody is when they come out for the most part with their first record. Um, you know, um, I remember playing and you know we had an EP out. And uh, we got on the on the local rock radio and stuff, but the EP had four songs on it. So I went in the like heavy wow. du heavy duty writing mode, and had to pull out about another seven seven or eight just to keep a club, you know, to keep us out in clubs. So you know, you always got to look, you always got to keep a step where you are and a step ahead, and uh, you know, to keep the thing moving because everybody, else, somebody else will run right by you. You know, no, I'm with you 100%. Man, I have it's, a, it's a lot of work and it's fun, too. I have a feeling you'll put your foot out and trip them now, and you'll get your back, you'll get, get where you got to go. <laughs> so, I'm enjoying the interview. Um, anything else you uh want to say? I think I'll, I'm gonna, we're in the beginning of our second season here. So, one of the things I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit you with a question 
yeah. that we've never asked anybody, which is kind of go, like, go. Hit me. it's a different version of the, the first album question. So now, since everybody out there doesn't know you, like a lot of the artists we've interviewed um, and, and you're a newer artist, this should be an interesting, interesting way to have an interesting person to ask the, for this question. So okay. anything you want the people out there to know as they're learning about who you are and who the band is, something about you as a person that nobody really knows, a hobby, something that you, a book you like, whatever it is that might be like, oh, I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, man, that's, that's a great, that's a great one. I'm sure I'm going to come up with something. And then as soon as we're done, I'll be like, oh, damn, I should have said this other thing. Right. So again, no clue, but something that seemed to, uh, the, the previous interviewer found quite uh, interesting about me is, uh, I have a, I'm a business guy also. I have a master's in business. I have a degree in, in hotel industry stuff. And in my previous life, I worked the hotel industry here in Las Vegas, but eventually I, I started my own business completely unrelated. And the reason that I've, I've started this project, which is like I said, a little bit like that other band is the whole point is, look, I've kind of had a little bit of success on the business world and now I'm able to focus more on on music and that's where i'm pumping resources now so when you say something like man it looks like you guys are focusing on the right track i think it's definitely coming from my business paths because look the music industry is all different animal dude it's completely different mm -hmm. but there are some business basics in there that i kind of apply to anything so i think that's why we are like our, our, our idea is like icarus right let's go and let's fly as close to the sun let's get as high as we can and uh, if we get burned, we'll get burned, we'll fall back down, but we'll get back up again and go at it again. So right. that's a little bit of the philosophy. And I think that comes from, you know, that, that a business world where, where it's ruthless. So yeah, just trying to do that. Yeah, so you got <laughs> the attitude of the phoenix. The phoenix will rise regardless. <laughs> ah, thank you, yeah. You know, um, I think it, it, obviously at some point we want to have you back. Um, I think you'd enjoy talking to my, uh, my partner here, Tom. Because he's uh, ruthless in that manner, Run, runs the web design company, also plays currently in, a, in, in, well, he was until about a week ago, playing in multiple bands. And uh, man, when he Thank gets you. driven in the promos, promoting something, um, that drive can like, such tunnel vision, it's amazing. You know, yeah. he, did, yeah. he did me a favor on uh, the, when I put my, my band together that he ended up being in. The night of the first gig, I booked a headlining gig based on my reputation from my previous band. And we were going on like around 1030 at night. He lived an hour and a half away. And at 830, he goes, I'm not playing that house kit because they they had said we had to play a house kit. But then we noticed the other bands were using their own stuff. He drove yeah. all the way up there like 800 miles an hour and got back like 10 minutes before our gig with me about the cry. I was sweating and like shaking and he got back and, and set his stuff up and played like a monster. So he had, a, but he had to have it a way that made us better playing on his you own. Gotta, you gotta have it. You gotta have it. Yeah. But yeah. You, know, you never trust the drummer for something to, you know, go explode on you. So <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> but um, I think I, I think what we did, we're right on about a half hour. I think um, if there's anything you want to say to anybody out there, the fans that are following you now and the fans that are going to see this and hopefully uh, follow you soon, floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, no, thanks again. dude. love talking to you and, and to all your, 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 your entire audience. And check us out. We're really active on Instagram. It's at Velvet Chains Band, B-A-N-D. Uh, we're on Facebook. I think we're on TikTok too. We're not very active on there. But uh, YouTube, Vivo, check out our music video. It's quite intense. And the, the one we put out is the watered down version because the first version of that thing was, yeah, it was, I don't know if YouTube was going to accept it, but it's pretty freaking good. Uh, but no, thank you, man. I appreciate the time and, and be happy to come on here again if you ever need me or want to have me. And uh, yeah, congrats on the podcast, dude. You guys are kicking ass. Thank you very much. You're, 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 doing, too, you're doing very well yourself. I enjoy your company there, Nils. Um, I, uh, I like speaking to the newer uh, musicians as well. And to see that you got the fire out there, you definitely got a fan in me. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for the time, dude. All right. Thank you for being here. We'll definitely get you on again.
All right, you have a great night, great weekend. Appreciate we'll see you. It. Bye, bro. See ya. Change. Bye -bye. Icarus. Get it. Rock it. Enjoy it. Let's go.